Dan Moyoni is wasted. It, you know, sometimes you find these people criticizing. Dan Moyoni was so much criticized. Mm. I thought you would say, hey, Dan, you know, this is a business oriented uh, radio. I, I won't keep you here. Mm. Don Moyani's English is so on, it's so bad son, but today they love him. I thought Dan handled John Robbie's show brilliantly. After five o'clock, good morning, 702 Talk Radio, John Robbie and Dan Moyane. In a short while, or well, just about now, Jeremy Mags will kick off with the uh, latest eyewitness news. We have lots of stuff coming up for you on, on the show later on this morning. Jeremy, good morning. Dan, good morning. In battle, preacher Alan Bussack is mounting a last-ditch effort to save his diplomatic career, now all but in tatters. Bussack says he'll be appealing to President Mandela to appoint an independent investigator... 702 News. 24 hours a day, in touch, in tune, and independent. 7 past 6, 702 Talk Radio. John Robbie here with, not Dan Church, but Dan Mayani. Taking your calls on 830702. Alan Bussack looks like curtains for him. We'd like to talk to him. We'll talk to other people about that, uh, about that issue. And the NSL, serious allegations made in the Sowetan today by a journalist. Certainly no room for doubt there. He's calling, he's calling them cheats, eh? Yeah, they've rigged the draw for the BP Top 8 semi-final, which saw Chiefs and Pirates avoiding each other. Wouldn't you think, wouldn't you think with all the, the, the rows and ructions and the number of times this has come up, that they would make it in such a way they cannot rig the draw? No way, some way they cannot. Get a, Always get a dog to pick people. the balls or something like that, you know? <laughs> oh, yes, whatever. Get somebody independent. And it was good for the NSL the PRO, Franya Nashiburi, just a while ago before the 6 o'clock news to phone us. He phoned us in, yeah. Yes. First in. Apparently on his way to the airport and say, no, it's not true and he's simply very yeah, unhappy. You have to say cocked it up. You have to say cocked it up. Yeah. With so many people watching and waiting and then suddenly uh, uh, Sibir Sisi says, hang on, I want to have a word about this to avoid it. And he ignores the guy, won't talk to him. And Surely that's uh, not the way to go. That's not good PR, is it? No, it's not at all. And uh, the guy from Umtata Bats is also quoted uh, by the Sowetan as saying, I expected the draw to be conducted by neutral people. Mm. They don't seem to, to learn at all from this. This year, the same process was used, and I didn't hear many complaints, but people are still saying it is not you know, transparent. You don't get allegations in cricket, you don't get allegations in rugby, you don't get allegations in other sport. And soccer, the biggest sport, the most supported sport, the best maybe sport in the whole country, or what should be the best, they always get it wrong. Do they have these type of things for when they have to choose teams against each other in cricket and rugby? Like when they have knockout competitions, you have the okay. Lion Cup and all that, and they've also got a bit of a draw there, but you just don't seem to get it. And the NSL is the one that's always accused of it. As long as I've been in this country, there's been accusations of draws being rigged, and yet it never seems to work. Well, I think one of the good things we should do this morning is to get hold of Sibusi Somselugu himself and find out more from his side. And also put the allegation. I mean, these guys call him gutter pressure and call him trying to make a name for himself. Yeah. Let's but, find uh, out what, uh, what it, he it, it seems to me they should either... Uh, redraw, they should either answer the allegations or they should sue the guy. They yeah. should sue the guy. It's seven minutes after eight o'clock, 702 Talk Radio, Dan Moyana and John Robbie. It's Thursday morning, coolish than it has been in the last few days. Well, the Busaka affair seems to be still dominating the news. We've had comments uh, in the news about what's going on. We have, of course, been hoping to speak to Busaka sometime uh, this morning. We understand his phone is not uh, working. Cut off, hasn't Cut paid off. his bills. And when we spoke to Mohammed Ali, our correspondent in Cape Town earlier on, we uh, asked him to try and track Busaka down and ask him to phone us so we can talk to him and find out more about that. The other little row brewing today was the is a soccer NSL BP Top 8 semi final draw. Allegations by Busisom Selig, the Sowetan soccer writer, reading, reading, but Fanya Nashibudi phoning us just before six o'clock this morning say it is not true. The whole thing was, uh, uh, was straight and open and transparent. Radio. I've been in radio for about 15 years now. I mean, I've been mainly as a radio reporter, news person from the mid 80s until now. But from last year, I began asking myself, you know, about talk radio, you know, what's talk radio? I mean, I looked at it as a new challenge. That was the main reason for me to say, I must look for something. I was curious to know what is it that's going to talk radio, what talk show host, what makes a talk show host. 
he has taken on one hell of a job. A morning show in talk radio is just about the biggest challenge in radio. And it's got to be like rock and roll without the music. Where you turn it on, you don't quite know what's going to happen. Hopefully it's fun, but if the big stories are there, you're going to go for it. Well, also another call, you know, local elections coming up uh, uh, in October. But nobody seems to know uh, where to go to. We had a caller earlier from Seoul saying, I want to register, I don't know where to go. We reckon the NSL maybe has been appointed to run, to run the elections with all this. But we had a councillor phoning through saying, no, 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 no. Uh, we are running it, of course there are problems, there's a hotline number. Yeah, the hotline number is 407-7389. We give it a ring. All right, let's give it a ring. This is the hotline number if you don't know what happens uh, for the election. 407-7389. Good morning, Queen Good morning, ma'am. Is that 407-7389? Yes. Uh, the local elections hotline number? Yes. Okay, my name is Dan and, uh, you know, I want to vote and there's so much confusion about where to register. Okay, I think library my nearest library yes or the health centers or the health yes. center uh, health a clinic for instance yes big oh. health centers big clinics all right okay and big shopping centers they would have forms available and wh what documents should i take there when i go to register just take your uh, <coughs> id you said that's just the id just take your id along now if i don't have an id uh, if uh, some of my cousins for instance don't have ids you have to have an id to register Oh, so if I don't have, I must take my birth certificate and apply for an ID? Yes, yes. Uh, that's going to take them. Okay. What, what, what's your name, madam? It's Jeannie speaking. Hey, Jeannie, you've been on 702 Talk Radio. It's a white registration, male-dominated. There's no chance you're going to get in there, you know, whatever. They don't have a South African black journalist working in the newsroom report. I've never heard of anybody. I said, oh, okay, fine. So that was the information I got from outside. That was the mindset I had about 702 when I came. I came and I said, I must find a job. But I told myself, what's the point, you know? If nobody's going to go and ask for a job, how are you going to really know if it's true? started at the same time. We both came into the newsroom at pretty much the same time as freelancers, both terribly anxious about our future at 702, where we were going to be, how we were going to make it at this company. We felt like very, very tiny fish in a huge, huge pond. Good morning. Politicians commit themselves to peace, but the right wing says no. Inkata and the ANC clash over the arrest of seven policemen. The PLO and Israel move closer to a formal peace deal. Political leaders across the spectrum have appealed for South Africans to come together today to mark their commitment to peace, but right-wingers have spanned the country's first national peace day. The ANC and Inkata have clashed over the arrest of seven policemen. The men were arrested yesterday for allegedly instigating East Rand Township violence. They are suspected of being involved in community self-defense units. We worked together through a lot of the violence. We were both covering violence stories at the same time. Life-threatening situations as a journalist that you can get into sometimes, I mean, make you think about whether it's worth it. The, I mean, the, the killing of, of Ken Oosterbrook was one of those occasions when I really felt that my life was, you know, was, was being threatened. That was out in Tokoza. National Peacekeeping Force, a big battle, shootings between SDUs and the, and the SPUs in the hostel. And we were there with other journalists trying to cover the whole place at, a, at an old sort of dis, disused garage, it's a petrol service station. And uh, 600 meters away, shooting, and suddenly somebody is on the ground and screams at the journalists were there and said, gee, somebody's been shot. And you couldn't see from that distance what was happening. I was crouching behind one of the armored vehicles and, you know, feeling very, very scared and wondering why I was there. And I thought, this is it. That was the day. You know, there is no story really worth dying for. But you never, I mean, everybody who's been in that situation, you never really know what's going to happen. You go out there, you're going to cover a story, you want to inform the public, and those things happen. You don't ask for them, you don't expect them. 
702 Talk Radio, 7 past 7. John Robbie, Dan Mayani here, recovering rapidly after a cup of coffee. Feel better now. We're going to talk to Brett Hilton Barber about the Busak affair. That's the big story that's rumbling on. I see the star says he should quit. Did you see Madam and Eve today? Madam and Eve in the star. Do you no, like no, that one, I Dan? haven't, John. That's, haven't. that's got to be the freshest thing in, in uh, a South African newspaper, what, what that you... Madam and Eve thing. Right. They got, they got they were doing stuff about affirmative action and things like that. <laughs> Some not, fun. Now, now they're into fun. They've got the, the lady on the plane, and there's a Madam and Eve there. So you've got to push. It's impossible. And the crowd gets bigger and bigger, and she's like, no, the plane, push harder. Gasp, I did it. And then you discover they're on. They're, they're, she says, right, we finally got the seat to go back. Now, who wants to deliver the baby? So still taking the mickey out of that SAA ad. You know that ridiculous ad? Which was voted the worst <laughs> ad ever. But apparently, SAA people feel it did them a good, a, a good uh, well, awareness thing. They obviously spent a lot of money on it, you know? Yes, but no, no, not a great one indeed, that. <laughs> so this thing is working for him. <laughs> hey, it's coming up to six minutes. Time for another traffic check. Aki Anastasio Dumela, how is it looking? Dumela, get there. Oh, uh, get there, woman, now, John. Hey, uh, go ahead. I'm going to say that last part is Greek. Well, it's a beautiful <laughs> morning. The sky is blue, it's not a cloud inside. It's 90 degrees up here. Looks like we're heading in, uh, for another scorcher this morning. Uh, the buzz is already on our cloud thing this morning. Busy traffic as you head up towards the Pretoria and Johannesburg city centres. I can assist you, 702 traffic. Uh, okay. There were several people who used to phone live on air and off air they used to send faxes and write letters which some of them I never saw but some of the callers came through there was one particular woman I think her name was Lorraine I can't remember the rest of it so it was Lorraine uh, I think and she used to phone right on the news desk after every almost after every news bulletin and said oh you just a token there get off air you know it's a white man's radio station english radio station i can't hear what you're saying and uh, just uh, you know go and work for radio zulu and everything i came off air and i stayed off air for one year uh, as a news reader and for me that was biggest disappointment there was a talk at the time and there has been since that we took him off because he has an african accent not so. I thought 702 uh, was the forward-looking station, the station that was irreverent, rebel, challenging stereotypes. He was taken off air uh, because the standard of his delivery was not quite what we were, were looking for. We needed to do some work in the studio off air with the red light off. I was disappointed, feeling torn apart. I was feeling down, down and under, and I said, no, this is not on for me. But some people said, listen, it has happened to other people before. It was felt that there was a need to give Dan the confidence to say, right, we've worked on the problem, now it's restored, you go back on air, and he would feel he had an additional tool to deal with the criticism, rather than leaving him where he was and coping with the flag. And he, at that time, was certainly very unconfident about what he was doing. He felt he was entering a, a sort of white domain, if you like, with this, with this African voice. The kind of training we did with Dan is the kind of training that I do with most broadcasters involving posture, involving delivery, involving how you use your vocal cords, inflections, straightforward. And one day I went to him and I said, uh, like about a year later, I said, Chris, I mean, I've been off air reading news on one year. My dream now is to go back on air and read news. I've persevered so much. It seems to me like you say one thing and do something else. We spoke about it and he was saying, oh, oh no, it's not that and everything. And, you know, a couple of days later, I was back on air. A few weeks passed by, the phone rang, and it was, she said, Dad, hi, this is Lorraine here. I said, oh, I'm going to get it again. She said, no, 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 no. It's not one of those calls again. I just want to say, well done, you've improved, I can hear you. I said, well, I haven't really done anything. I think you have done the job for yourself. You're beginning to be familiar with the way I speak. I am adamant that there wasn't a problem and there isn't a problem, and that our audience must learn to adjust to that kind of accent um, if we're to have a commercially viable, uh, viable future. We also came to the conclusion that that is the sound of South Africa. And I think worldwide one is discovering that uh, the uh, local accents have become far more acceptable. Bear in mind this country has a history of news readers and radio announcers who came from England. Uh, it was very BBC-ish. We've decided to move away from that. Nelson Kholitata Mandela is here, also known fondly to many of his supporters as Madiba. He's just arrived here. We covered the inauguration and the voting. I think it was a splendid job. 
Will you please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Listen to the applause. The entire amphitheater here at the Union Buildings rises and claps to a man and a woman and the feet are stamping. This is history in the making. This is truly the birth of the new South Africa. Dan, this must be an emotional moment for you. Chris, the man who spent so many years in jail. I remember when I grew up, my father used to say, Mandela will never come out of prison alive. He'll die there of old age or whatever. But here he is today, standing up in front of the world as the first black president ever of South Africa, the new state president. Becky's on the line. Hi, Becky. Hello, John. Thanks for calling. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, Dan and John. Morning. I, I must just call you DJ because it's Dan and John. <laughs> Dan, uh, you're copywriter, Becky. Right. <laughs> you see, um, I'm very much annoyed by this Ellen Pusak thing. Yeah. But he seems, he seems to believe that, he seems to claim he's, he believes that he's innocent, and he says yes, he's willing to go ahead with this criminal uh, proceedings that uh, the Danish, uh, the Dan Church aid people are now preparing to institute against him. He seems willing to go ahead to court. Then it seems for a man, one man, earning 20,000, 20,000... Yes. Uh, in December, 93, at night, and a man phoned, and he had been listening to me, opening my heart to the listen about who I am and where I come from. Um, uh, and he said, he comes from the 1820 settlers. He's that stock for people. He's been here and they've worked hard. They've done this, they've built the country and everything. He, I let him speak and speak. So I said, okay, fine. I don't deny that you've done that. And I'm happy you've accepted that you came here, you settled here, and you've done what you've done. But you didn't do it alone. My father worked in the mines as a young boy when he came to Johannesburg. And he worked for several years like that and he, as a laborer. And my mother, you know, grew up like this, like that. And I, I told him about my mother's roots you know, semi-Dutch, semi-Indian, and uh, all kinds of mixed blood. And uh, I said, look, I'm, I'm like that. I have this background of, of Dutch blood. Uh, maybe I have an eighth of Dutch blood in me, or a tenth, I don't know. And uh, some Indian blood and everything. And I said, you know, this has happened. This is South Africa. You know, you came and you enriched it more. And together we worked. People worked in the mines, black and white. People built this country black and white. And I said, there's no reason to say you've done better than the others. We all work together. So the guy said, thank you, and he left. And then this other man phoned. And he said, gee, what a wonderful thing. You just showed me that we can work together. There's a way for all of us here. You've changed my perception and everything. And he said, gee, you know, he's phoning through, he's touched by it. And, you know, he's listened to this and it's beginning to make sense. He's a right winger, hates blacks, hated me for my accent. But after what I had said, it changed his mind. He thinks I'm just a, anybody, I'm just like anybody like he knows and that we can do something together as South Africans. And he's happy that I've done that for him. And then we chatted more about his family and what he's going to do for Christmas. And I played a song for him. It was a Christmas song by Elton John. Nice one, it's nine minutes to eight o'clock. 702 Talk Radio Thursday morning. Dan Moyan and John Robbie heading for mid-20 today. Slightly cooler than it's been in the last few days. Well, right now, though, it's time for that wonderful Valentine's Day competition. We've got the seventh caller on the line, and we're going to be reading out a clue shortly. Barbara from Ren Park Ridge. Good morning. Welcome to the radio. Morning, John. Morning, Dan. Hi. I'm okay. Hi, Babs. Are you are you are you ready, dear? For I'm this. I'm extremely nervous. You all, you better listen very carefully. I will. Okay. Here we go. It started out as the finest fairy tale wedding, a partnership that touched the hearts of millions on their island and beyond. She ended up with a wet look hairstyle, and he ended up dating a divorcee. People paid millions to hear the story of their downfall and find out what went wrong. Barbara, whom am I talking about? I have the faintest idea. You have no Not faint. the faintest idea. Oh, it's a couple. <laughs> Well-known couple. Thanks, Barbara. Okay. <laughs> good, uh, well, good for trying. Mark, shut that music. Hi, Dan. Mm. Yes, <laughs> how are you, Mark? Fine, and you? Yes, well, whom am I talking about? That's Prince Charles and Princess Diana. Yes, spot on. Charles and Diana. 
<laughs> oh, how did you know? Well, you must have listened very carefully yeah. to the clue. <laughs> Gee, well, well. Well, it's coming up for Eyewitness News with Jeremy Max. We are out of here, back when you're ready tomorrow morning. And just after Eyewitness News, John Burks and Gary Edwards will be taking their turn from 9 to 12. They're talking healthy eating, food and nutrition scientist, Dr. Peter from Twisk. Well, enjoy that. Right now, it's 9 o'clock. I wouldn't mind looking at myself as having broke new ground and having helped open the way for people who came after me, you know, Tabang Mamunyane and Nolin Moranasan, Benedict Mach, and now Neo Muyanga. And, you know, I, I feel, you know, I don't know how they feel, but I was the first and that was it. But I, uh, South African, okay, there was Alice Chavanduka working here, but she comes from Zimbabwe. But I was feeling, hmm, you know, this is it for me. I didn't make a big deal out of it. And, uh, but looking back now, I, I feel uh, one has come a long way. And being with a breakfast show now, I think, gee, you know, first black South African on breakfast show, 702 Talk Radio, one of the greatest radio stations. What is this, un baking, breaking another new, new ground? What's going on? I don't, I don't want to see myself as having a mission, as a leading a path, but it has happened that way. And, uh, you know, I, I feel good, but you have, you have to work hard for these things. Uh, they, don't, they don't get given to you. Or on, or on a plate, you know, and like a pie, or they don't fall out of heaven like manna. You really have to work hard. You make your future, you plan for it, you prepare for it. It just doesn't happen. Um, who knows, in the future, you know. Uh, I would like to be in the future one of the, you know, top there, you know. I don't know where this talk show thing is going to take me. They might turn around after two years and say, you know, it didn't work. Try something else. But I have confidence in me that, you know, I'll make things work. I would like to see myself going places. Dan Moyani takes out his traditional weapon in praise of 702 land. <laughs> John Becks, King of Talk Radio. Sit down, Lapa Goli, Sia Shalagum Nandep Sukuna Seminite.